going to read a long scripture and you know just want to look at something before we pray this morning looking at the joy of the Lord you know the joy which is also the keys to victorious living joy I realize you know when the Bible say because he loved righteousness and hated wickedness therefore the Lord is God has anointed him with the oil of gladness above his fellows Joy is an essential ingredient for you and for me to live a victorious life in these last days. Because there's going to be trouble. You know, Jesus said in this world you will have tribulation. You will have Christ and say, be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. He say, in me you will have joy, in me you will have peace. Jesus is the author of peace and the power behind the peace that we need. And this morning, if you have your Bible, I want you to open to 2 Chronicle chapter 20. I'm going to read a story here. And that will help you and me to understand that joy becomes an essential ingredient for you and for me to live a victorious life in these last days. Like I said, Unfortunately, things are not going to get better. But the Bible says in the book of Daniel, it says when wicked men begin to do wickedly in the land, those who know their God, not those who talk about him, will be strong and do exploit. In in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, it says to him that is joined to the living, there is hope. And so, when you are joined to Christ, who is the living Christ, is the the living bread. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so when I'm joined to him, there is hope. And when I'm joined to him, then peace and joy comes. And this is what I believe that we need like never before this morning and the rest of our lives on earth here so that we can live a victorious life. And victory in of itself is not just the absence of trial. Yes, you can live a trial-free life. But joy comes to sustain and to keep you while you're waiting for the light to shine on the other end of the tunnel for you. Second Chronicle chapter 20 from verse 1. And after this, the Moabites and the Ammonites, with them some of the Munites, came against Jehoshaphat for battle. So men came and told Jehoshaphat, a great multitude is coming against you from Edom, from beyond the sea. Behold, they are in Hazazon Tamar, and that is in Engindi. Then Jehoshaphat was afraid, and he set his face to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. And this is what we've been doing throughout the whole month of January, proclaim a fast, because the enemy has been coming against us. A multitude of enemy coming against your marriage, against your health, against your job, against your situation. And so what we were doing was not just doing some kind of a religious exercise. We were trying to keep in line with the scriptures and trying. I remember a story in the Bible when Jesus, the disciples tried to cast out a demon, a demon possessed young man. And they couldn't and Jesus and they came and Jesus drove out the demon when he came down from the mountain. And the disciples asked him, say, how come we were not able to do the same thing? And Jesus said, this can come not out, but through praying and fasting. And so tra- uh, prayer and fasting is an essential ingredient in our Christian walk with the Lord. And I pray that the Lord will give you and me, you know, the grace to do that every now and again concerning our situation. Amen. Because we are dealing with a very wicked devil who is not willing to let go easily. The Bible says he's going around like a rolling lion looking for whom to devour. And so the Bible continues in verse 4. And Judah assembled to seek help from the Lord from all the cities of Judah. They came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem and in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? You rule over the kingdoms of the nations. In your hand are power and might. 
so that none is able to withstand you. Did you not, our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? This is what it is. Every time God bless you, the enemy is out to take it from you. Every time God gives you something, the enemy wants to take it. God has blessed you with wonderful children, but the enemy is trying to take them through drug, low self-esteem, try to take them through crisis, inferiority, complex. And God has blessed you with a wonderful husband, yet the enemy is trying to snatch him away. God has blessed you with a wife, and the enemy is trying to take that away from you. God has blessed you with a job, and the enemy wants to take that. And when it comes to that, that is when you as a child of God must stand up. Because if you know whatever you have today came from God, and what it took you to get that thing is what is going to take you to sustain it. Amen. And so this is what this man was trying to say. God, you gave us this thing. And now the enemy is trying to take it away from us. We're not going to just sit back and fold our hands and let him come and take it. Right. No. And they, and they that live in it have, and they have lived in it and have built for you in it a sanctuary for your name saying, if disaster comes upon us, the sword and judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this house and before you, for your name is in this house, and cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and save us. And that is why we'll come to church like I say to you. The church is not a social club. The church is not a place to come and look pretty. The church is a hospital. It's an emergency. ER, I must say. Is a place where the one you can come bleeding, where God is out here to meet you at the point of your need. It's a place where you can come as you are, but you are not meant to live as you are. Because God called you to change you. It's a place that you can run to in a time of trouble. The Bible said the name of the Lord God Almighty is a strong power. The righteous run to it and they are saved. And so this man said the house that was built for you in this land is there for us as a reminder of the presence of God that when we are in trouble and we run to you, then you will hear us and save us. And so the reason why we need the joy of God to sustain us and not give up is so that we can come to the house of the Lord. And that's why David said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of God. For in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, I will find pleasure forevermore. And so this king now began to talk to God and reminding him yeah. for your name is in this house and cry out to you in our affliction and you will hear and save and now behold now this is how you take your case to the Lord and he said come let us reason together that's what he said put me in remembrance of my word that's what the Bible says, in all our getting, get understanding. In Hosea, he said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And now behold, the men of Anah and Moab and Seir, whom you, have, whom you will not let Israel invade when they came from the land of Egypt, and whom they avoided and did not destroy. Behold, they reward us by coming to drive us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. Whatever the enemy is trying to take away from you, whatever God has given you, your marriage, your children, the enemy didn't give them to you. The drug dealer didn't give your children to you. That other woman didn't give your husband to you, so she can't take it from you. He said, they're trying to. Verse 12 says, Our God, will you not execute judgment on them? For we are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. We don't know what to do right now. I don't come to church, like I said, to look pretty. I come to church because I'm coming to cry out to the God who is all-powerful. David said, once has I spoken, twice have I heard that all power belongs to God. Meanwhile, all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, 
That means every member of your family, they came with their little ones and their wives and their children. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, and the son of Matania, a Levite of the son of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. Verse 15, and he said, listen all Judah, listen all Grand Cash, listen all members of Cornerstone Mountain Assembly and the inhabitants of, of Canada. And King Jehoshaphat, the Lord says the Lord to you, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed at this great heart. For the battle is not yours. For the battle is the Lord. The battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord. God is the one who is going to fight for you and you will hold your peace. In Exodus chapter 14 verse 14 he said, I say you shall hold your peace and the Lord will fight for you. And this is what we do. That's why we come to God and present our case to him so that he can fight for us. He said, tomorrow go down against them. Behold, they will come up by the ascent of zeal. But you will find them at the end of the valley east of the wilderness of Jero. You will not, verse 17, you will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm and hold your position. Joy. Your position is joy and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them and the Lord will be with you. Verse 18, then Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. And the Levites of the Kohites and the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. And they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Telcor. And when they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophet, and you shall prosper. And when he had taken counsel with the people, he appointed those who were to sing to the Lord and praise him in holy attire. I don't know what that holy attire is. I think I should look for something that is shiny next time and just come out blinging. Amen. <laughs> Okay, I think that's why we come to church looking beautiful. Amen. I never saw that until uh, on Friday we're praying. I say, holy attire. Okay, that means I'm in good company. Amen. <laughs> yeah, they have holy attires looking clean. Uh, and they went before the army and said, give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love and endures forever. Verse 22. And when they began to sing and praise the Lord, the Lord set an ambush against the men of Anom, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, so that they were all routed up. For the men of Ammon and Moab rose against the inhabitants of Mount, uh, Mount Seir, devoting them to destruction. And when they have made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they all helped to destroy one another. Can you imagine? Praise they didn't have to lift a finger. They didn't have to lift a finger. God moved because they found joy and began to celebrate the goodness of God. Before I go any further, I want to share a story. And this happened to me, I think, 1995 or 1996, 97. In one of those years, I can't remember. I'm not very good with dates, so I don't want to say something that I'm not too sure of. But on this particular, one of those days, uh, those, in those years, I went to a, a meeting. And I traveled for about an hour to a meeting. And it's called an all-night meeting where people go to pray in Africa. We do that from 10 to 6 in the morning. And I mean pray. <laughs> Just pray and pray all night. All right. And so at this particular all night, there was a testimony that came forward. A woman came to give a testimony, to share a testimony. You know, the Bible says in the book of Psalms, it said, you know, it said, the righteousness of thy testimony is everlasting. It gives me understanding and I will live. You know, testimony comes to build our faith up. And this woman, the story went this way. Uh, she went to the doctor a few months before, prior to that day. 
And they checked her, and the result came that she had a terminal illness, and she had just a few months to live. And so they, when they gave her that report, the doctor's report, she came home on that fateful day, and then got all her children together, and then she dropped the, 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 the doctor's report on a coffee table, and then called all her children together, and they said, this is what we're going to do. We're just going to sing and dance and praise the Lord. And, and then for how long, I don't know, but they were just dancing and singing and praising the Lord over that doctor's report. And she did that, and then and the Holy Spirit said, go back again. And she went back to the hospital, and she did the test again. They did the test again, and then the, 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 the result came back again different. You know, what the enemy said through praise, the Holy Spirit and the power of God reversed that thing that the enemy was trying to do to her. And it was from there I, I, I picked my own, you know. And when we started doing our meetings in our, in our church back in Nigeria, and I would start, we have our all night too. And from four o'clock in the morning, we start what we call the dance of life, where we would just be praising God for two hours nonstop. Now praying, just singing and dancing before the Lord. And I can say with all humility, in, through those, the, in those days, I, I've seen God move. I've seen miracles happen. I've seen a woman who was a Muslim woman. This is true. And she was living near the church and she couldn't sleep that night. And she decided to come and see what was happening. And she stood by the window of the church. It's not like here because of the, we don't have windows, right? In Africa, you have windows <laughs> in the church. And, and she was just standing by the window. This lady was asthmatic or chronic asthma or something like that. And the power of God, without her coming into the church building, she was a Muslim. She was not a Christian. She didn't come to pray. She was just standing by the window as a spectator. And the power of praise touched her and she got healed. And that's how she got born again. And then she started working for me in the school. God moved through praise. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. And the only way you can praise God effectively is when you've got joy. Because the reason why we need joy, listen to me, child of God, is because there are situations you are going through. Because your external circumstances is always saying things contrary to the word of God. And when you pay attention to what is happening around you, it is hard to praise God. But when you begin to look inward, then joy comes. And out of that joy, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Because listen to me, your deliverance, mostly deliverance, will ride on the wings of joy. The Bible says in Psalm 149 verse 6, it said, let the high praises of God be in their mouth. Let the high praises of God be in your mouth. And the two-edged sword in your hand to execute the judgment that is written. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and the two-edged sword in their hand. Jehoshaphat was praying and he said, God, execute your judgment that is written. And the only thing that quickens the judgment of God against your adversary is praise. So he said, let the high praise of God be in their mouth and the two-edged sword in their hand to execute the judgment that is written. In Psalm 105, verse 4 to 3, and he said, he brought them forth. He brought his people forth with joy. His chosen people with gladness. And so if God, one of the things that will bring you out quicker, out of your misery, is joy through praise. So the Bible says he brought them forth out of their captivity. So your deliverance, in most cases than not, will ride on the wings of joy to praise. In Psalm 35 verse 10, you can write it down. And the Bible says the ransom of the Lord shall return 
and come to Zion with songs. And everlasting joy will be upon them, upon their heads. And they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sign shall flee from them. And so if you are in depression and you're going through depression and low self-esteem, when you begin to learn to get the joy of the Lord and begin to praise God, the Bible says sorrow and sighing will flee. When we are depressed, we'll sigh a lot. It says sorrow and sighing will flee. And so we must, of a necessity, contract the spirit of joy this year. Like I said, joy does not come from the outward occurrence around you. And so how do, or the second way of getting the joy is spending time in his presence. Spending time in God's presence will give you joy. Psalm 16 verse 11 says, Thou will show me the path of life. For in your presence there is fullness of joy. In your presence there is fullness of joy. And so I need to be in the presence of God at all times. Whether I'm driving in my truck, whether I'm in, in my home, wherever you are, in my workplace, I need to create an atmosphere that invites the presence of God. The Bible says in Psalm 91, it says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High God will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That is to say, I can't go far from your presence. The Bible says that, that, that the psalmist says, For Where will I go from your presence? I can't go far from the presence of the Lord. And so if I'm dwelling in the secret place of the Most High God, I will continue to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That is to say, there is a consistent relationship with God no matter what the situation is wherever I am I carry the presence of God in me because the Bible said the spirit of the Lord dwells in us now so spending time in his presence will create joy you can have the presence of God in your life and still have misery and depression the two cannot go together so the only way to escape misery the only way to escape depression is to enter into the presence of God. Why is that necessary? Because the joy of the Lord is the source of strength. In Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10, the last part of uh, verse 10, it said the joy of the Lord is your strength. You need strength to carry on. You need strength to deal with what is coming in these last days. Then you need the joy of the Lord to give you that strength. In Psalm 21 verse 1 said, The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation. How greatly shall he rejoice. And so if you need strength in God, you need, you need, God is the source of all strength. Like I said before, true joy. Money can give you that. Position can give you that. Titles can give you that. Relationship can even give that. You know, and you know, one of the most interesting, funny things about our world today, you see people and say, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you today. And then two months later, three years later, I don't love you, love you no more. <laughs> Amen. You, you know what I mean? You know, man, human beings, we are so inconsistent. We're not dependable. And I hear people say, oh, we grew apart. Instead of growing together. But the love of God is not like that. The Bible says, why we are yet seen as he loved us. He said, greater love had no man than this. That he laid his life down for his friends. If you get a new job today, you'll be happy. But after... Two weeks of working in that place, then the misery returns. Then you realize that actually your problem was not a job. How many times you keep saying, oh, if only I will get married. If only I will, and then you, you got married. And two years later, you realize that, oh, no, this marriage didn't solve it. And okay, maybe the only thing that is lacking in this marriage night is children. If only we can have children, maybe my joy will be full, right? And then you got three kids going. And you find out that that was just the beginning of sorrow. Amen. Well, <laughs> go 
because by the time the children begin to put you to work and you say, Lord, why did I pray for children? I wish. <laughs> Amen. You know, you think that the only thing like, you know, I wish if God can, you know, you know, when, when we are desperate, you know, be careful what you utter from your mouth. You know, when we're desperate and we think that that is where the problem lies and say, God, give me a child. I don't even care how it is. Anyhow, I just want to be a mother. Amen. And suddenly the anyhow child comes. Amen. <laughs> and you begin to say, oh Lord, <laughs> I wish, <laughs> you know, I just need a job, any kind of job <clears throat> that would take care of this misery. Just any kind of relationship. I just need a man. I just need a woman in my life. I just need this job. I just need to move from this town. If only I can live in Toronto, I believe that I will be the happy. Yes, you'll be happy. But you won't have joy. <laughs> you may be happy without joy. That is why people win what they call that 649. Amen. <laughs> and then two years later, they are back to where they came from. Amen. Because that is not the answer. So God, through Christ Jesus, is the only source of true joy. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 1, it says, For God giveth to man that is good in his sight, wisdom, knowledge, and joy. <coughs> Excuse me. And joy. But to the sinner, he has given what? The business of gathering and collecting. <laughs> that is to say that. And, and, and then you look at that again. Look at that text. Is it not true? <coughs> the gathering and collecting only to give it to one who pleases God. This is vanity. Now, let me interpret that in a different way for you. That is restlessness. That is moving from pillar to pole. <coughs> moving from one relationship to the other. Moving from one job to the other. Moving from one town to another. Looking for. But if the sinner knows... That God is the one that gives joy. It's not your job. <coughs> it's not your children. It's not your husband. It's not your wife. Nobody can give you that. Nobody can feel that emptiness in you. Only God. And when God, when you find the joy of the Holy Spirit, you know, the language your language changes. And God's language to you, you begin to hear God differently. You don't hear God <coughs> in judgment. You hear him in love. You hear his word in compassion. You hear him in mercy. Even when you are going through a storm, you are not discouraged. You may be crying, but you are still going on. It's just like that one that says, you may be on fire, but you still come into church. You may be going through all kinds of stuff. Everything around you is broken loose, and people can't understand why. You can still be strong. In the midst, you know, suddenly people see you all looking dressed with the holy attire in the mall. And they say, oh, aha, I wish I'm like this woman. I, I wish I'm like this man. Or maybe if I married the same man, like, <laughs> until you go to their house and you find out that mm -mm, it's not like that. Amen. What keeps her going is the joy of the Lord. So God answers you in joy because joy is the language of the Holy Spirit. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 20 says, For he shall not much remember the days of his life, because God answered him in the joy of his heart. He said, you will not remember. And that's why you're different. You, 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 don't, you don't remember what you're going through. It's not because you're not going through stuff. It's not that things are not happening around you. But God is answering you, giving you hope in the midst of your trial, in the midst of your tribulation, in the midst of the jobless situation. You have something inside of you that cannot be tampered with because God is answering you in joy. And like I said, that joy can only come. First, like he says in Ecclesiastes, he said, the, the sinner is collecting, wandering back and forth. Because joy 
It's not the product, it's not a byproduct of 649, it's not Lotus 649, it's not going to the poor, it's not sex, it's not a good job. Joy is a byproduct of genuine salvation. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 51 verse 12, it says, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Create to me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. So the platform for enjoying what we're talking about is salvation. So if I don't have Jesus, how can he give me joy? Because with the joy of the Lord, joy opens to you and to me the unlimited storehouse of God. With joy, you assess all the benefit of the kingdom. I don't know if your salvation. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3, it says, with joy, will you draw water out of the wells of salvation? So with joy, so for me to begin to assess the abundance of the kingdom, joy must be part of my life. And a Christian that has, that has no joy cannot have a fruitful, productive life in any capacity at all. Because joy brings fruitfulness and increase. You know, this scripture is very interesting. I want you to look at Joel chapter, 12, chapter 1 verse 12. Let's see what the Bible says there. You know, and it's so interesting as we look at that. It said, the vine is dried up. The fig tree languished. Pomegranate and palm and apple, all the trees of the feed are dried up, and gladness dried up from the children of man. Yeah, we'll continue. Is that the end with that translation? Because, because the end, they say, because joy is withered away. Uh huh. That's that. <laughs> you know, it's because joy is withheld. What trans What are you reading there? Okay. You know, it's said for for the grain. He said what? He said for for the meat and offering and the drink offering is withheld from the house of God. You know, the translation here says, the one I have, it says, the field are withered because joy is withheld, is withered away from the sons of man. Joel chapter 1 verse 12. Yeah. You know, it's when there is no joy, what it's saying is that, when joy is not present in my life, the joy of the Holy Spirit, everything around me begins to what? Wither away. He yeah. say everything withers because joy has been withheld from man. Joy has been taken from me. When there is no joy in me, then nothing I do produces fruit. And this is why it's important because joy creates Fruits. And, and the Bible said life and death is what? It's in the power of the tongue. And so if I'm not joyful, I can't speak joyfully. If I'm not joyful, all I do is complain. Is it not? And grumble. And bicker. And criticize. And, and you don't want to be around people like that. They are killed joys. You know, you are excited one minute, you're just hoping and say, oh, God said things are going to be all right. And they look at you and say, in this situation, you say things are going to be all right. How is that possible? You know what I mean? And they just kind of, they, they have a pin there to just deflate. 
But you don't need people like that because the Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. Our confession is what helps to create joy. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 23 says, A man had joy by the answer of his mouth. Can you see that? He said, joy comes to you by the answer of your mouth. So how you respond to the situation around you. So if you have people who are negative all the time, because they want you to agree with them. You know, because if you don't agree with them, they think you are being proud and cocky. How can you see the situation and say things are going to be all right? How can you see this child in this messy situation and say they're going to be healed? Don't you see how this person died from that same situation? You know, how can you, be, how can you be happy? You know, you hear people say that. How can you be laughing in such a miserable situation? You don't, when you have joy, your environment does not detect to you. You detect your environment. Your situation does not control you. You control the situation. That is the power of joy. And so our confession creates the atmosphere for joy or misery. And, and how do we confess? Apart from vocalizing what we say, our prayer life too becomes a vehicle of joy. Our prayer life is also confession. Our prayer life also gives us joy. Job chapter 33 verse 26, he say, And he shall pray unto God, and he will be favorable unto him, and he shall see his face with what? Joy. And he shall restore unto man his righteousness. And finally this morning, as we pray, the word of God in the same confession is the only true source of joy. That is the only word that can bring you joy. That is the only word, and Jesus Christ is the word of God. The Bible says in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. The same was with God in the beginning. Without him was nothing made that was made. In him was life, and that life was the life of man. And the light shines in darkness, and darkness cannot comprehend it. He said, there came a man who was sent from God. He himself was not alive. The true light that lights the word was coming. So Jesus, when the angels came to the, uh, the, 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 the shepherd, you know, that were watching their flock by night. You know, when a man cannot sleep at night, when a woman cannot sleep at night due to the, the issues of life, watching, waiting, is that child going to come home? It's two o'clock, is my husband coming home tonight again? Drunk. Watching by night in misery, watching by night in frustration, watching by night in, de in, de in dejection, watching by night in hopelessness over the situation. While the angels were watching by night, there came an angel for them. And the angel said to them, fear not, like I said to you this morning, fear not, for I bring you. Good news of great joy. That's what the good news of Christ does. It brings great joy. It brings great joy. The word of God brings great joy. And this morning, finally, before we pray, Isaiah says to wine from verse 1 to 3. This is Jesus speaking. He said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the milk. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. What is holding you captive this morning? To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of our God. And to comfort all who mourn in Zion. And to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. And to give unto them beauty for ashes. And the oil of gladness. And the oil of joy for mourning. To give them the oil of joy. And the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. 
that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified in your life. He comes to, his word is sent forth to bring joy to you. So listen to me, child of God. You need joy. You need joy to sustain you in this life's journey. You need the joy of the Holy Spirit. Every other thing will fail and they will continue to fail. But only the word of God will endure forever. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word. He said, the words that I speak to you. John chapter 6. He said, the words that I speak to you. He said, the flesh counts for nothing. There is no pleasure in fleshly activity. You can't find pleasure. You can't find joy there. He said, the flesh counts for nothing. But the words that I speak to you. They are spirit and they are life. That is to say the word of God has the power to bring life to any dead situation here this morning. What are you going through? My brother, my sister, we need to pray and say, God, I need joy. This year, I want to contact that joy and I will not let nothing take it away from me. Nothing would take that joy from me. The joy of the Holy Spirit that passes of every man's understanding. There is a joy that passes every man's understanding. There is a joy that passes every understanding of this word. There is a joy that no power on earth here can take away from you. And that joy is the joy of the Holy Spirit. There is a joy that the Holy Spirit can give you that nothing can take away from you. This morning, can we stand up, please, if you don't mind? Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just want you to ask God for that joy. Joy like a river. If you lack joy in your life this morning, ask God for joy this morning. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill your heart with joy. Fill your home with joy. Fill your life with joy. Talk to God this morning. Maybe you've been looking at the wrong place. Looking to the wrong place for joy. And every time you come back, you are short changed. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7 said there's a peace and this is joy to the path at all understanding through Christ Jesus. There is a joy that path at all understanding. Let the Holy Spirit give you that. I can give it to you. Only Jesus can give it to you. Joy, the presence of the Holy Spirit in the midst of your crisis. So that you don't lose your head while others are losing theirs. You can keep your head while every other person else is losing their own head. That is what joy does. Joy gives you strength for every new day. In the midst of the storm, you can have joy. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. But I will give you praise. But I will give you praise. But I will give you praise. In Jesus' name. 